talking about some common algorithms. Caesar cipher. Yay. Bit of a, uh, ooh, that's small. That's small. Attributed to Julius Caesar, the, the, the basic idea here is just a alphabetic rotate to the, to the right or to the left. Um, the traditional is by three characters. So to encode your A's become D's, B, C, D, D's, um, and, and so on. And then to do decode here, you say, OK, my D's become A's, and, and so on. And it loops around. So your, as I show here, your X becomes an A, and the inverse goes the other way. Very basic. In terms of what this looks like in software is when you have a byte value, like you're referring to AL or DL or BL, the low order byte of the, those respective registers, you see a add or a sub. And what that will do internally is that it will um, add that specific value or subtract that specific value and um, Essentially, if it if it goes below zero or above FF, it just rotates around because the carry is ignored. Anybody get that? Any questions on that? Okay. XOR and variation. Okay, I'm going to show an example here. So XOR, who remembers what XOR does? Where's my DM? There it is. Exclusive OR, yes. And what does exclusive OR do? Anybody, what does an ex exclusive or do? Just give me kind of a, a high level. I have a not both. What? I have a not both. Either the not both. Yeah, oh, yeah. Or parity. Yeah, parity. Um, the way I like thinking about it is um, if you're XORing, otherwise the result is like, yeah. If you're uh, XORing with a uh, if you have some value and you're XORing it with another value, that second value there, um, because we're doing the, the Intel syntax, um, the second value is going to be your, um, your, your masking that says, these are the bits within that first value that I want you to flip. Because if it's um, a zero in the initial, um, and it's a 1 in your masking values, it's going to flip it. And if it's a 1 in your initial and it's a 1 in the masking value, it's going to flip it. Okay, so. Sorry, what was the path for again? For the VM? Yeah. My no, for the dollar. Oh, hold on. Let me, uh, let me just show this to you first. Okay, so what we have here, I just loaded up malware.exe into IDA. What's the first thing maybe you notice, or one of the first things you notice? IDA, it finished the auto analysis. There's something missing that's usually there. Graph mode, yay! Thank you for it. So usually you have you have a graph here. You don't have this this listing. You have a little box over here that shows a little graph for the function that you're in. Um, this is is Ida basically saying, um, yeah, I don't know how to graph this function. There's something weird going on here. Um, and this is this is the entry point for this. And you see, there's this 
saber colon address, that's the section name that I have pulled out of the <coughs> PE headers. So what's going on here is that there is something going on here. Uh, so that's just, just something to notice that kind of makes you go, huh, you know, what, what's going on? This, this is different um, than or opening a, a normal, normal binary like we did in the previous class. But what we're interested in here is the encoding. And um, we maybe got some information from, from you know, some of your packet analysis or, or from some logs, and we say, I think maybe there's some kind of XOR encoding going on. So what you do is you have your binary open here, you alt T to do a text search, and you type in there XOR, and you make sure find all occurrences is selected. Okay. What that does is it goes through doing a text search of the disassembly and gives you every line where XOR is. And if we had added a comment to one of the lines that says, this isn't XOR, you know, it would show up in here, but then it would also show the comment that says this is XOR. But since we haven't added any comments or anything, it's just showing all of the XOR instructions. This is a lot to go through. Actually, this isn't a lot compared to some binaries. Um, easiest method to start here, sort by instruction. Go to the top, and you see XOR, AL, AL. What happens when you XOR a register with itself? It zeroes out. It becomes zero, yes. So we know that these, these, these syntax, that syntax is just a way to, to easily zero out a register. That's something that compilers will do, will use. You'll see this in regular binaries. So that's something we can just kind of ignore. Ignore, ignore, oh, XOR, BL, DL. Well, maybe something's going on there, maybe not. BL, DL, all these. And we see this XOR, AX with this four byte value. Huh, I wonder what's going on there. Let's take a look at that. And what do you see? Graph. You do see a graph. A thick line. A thick line, yes, we see a bold line, which means what? There's a loop. I'm so proud of you guys. Okay. So there's a loop going on here. You see this XOR within this loop. Now what we don't see is necessarily a reading from memory. We see, okay, it's doing some with, with EAX, deck ESI. Jump not in zero, so ESI must be a, oh, move ESI eight. So this looks like a, what does this look like? What kind of loop? That we, that we covered in the last class. Starts with an F, ends with an R. It's a for loop. Um, where your, <laughs> where your initial value ESI starts off at 8 instead of incremented, gets decremented, and you jump out when it's 0, or you continue jumping while it's not 0. Um, but what we're not seeing is a, a reading into AX, we're seeing accessing AL, but not reading into AX. So part of this, though, is that there's another, this is just an inner, there's another for loop. If we take a look up here, we see, oh, move ECX into EAX. Oh, <coughs> going on down here, oh, move EAX into EDX. So there is a moving in to memory and a incrementing of that memory location. So it looks like there's some kind of um, deobfuscation or decoding routine going on here. Um, and what we can do is go through and pseudocode it and figure out what's going on. Something else we can do is we can go, okay, take a look at this. What are the cross-references? There's just one. Let me take a look at that. Huh. It's being called right after this weird string is pushed onto the stack. That's a good indication that they decoded those right there. 
So that's just that's one way to uh, to to find it. If you think it's an XOR, as I said, do a text search, Alt T, XOR, find all, and then make sure that you sort by the instruction. So as everybody give that a try, what you're going to use is the let me bring this up. What you're going to use is in the um, reverse engineering of malware folder, there's a labs folder. And in there is for a you know this this is it. I'm gonna grab the, the file in there and extract it out to your desktop. The password for that is Infected, all lowercase. Okay, let's go over MSP MSNSV.dll. Folks online get the answer to question one, which function contains XOR loop? One O B. Go take a look. Oh, wrong one. Oh, hey, here it is. Okay. No, oh, I'm in malware. So malware. Um, just as a quick rule of thumb, a good way to help keep yourself from accidentally infecting yourself uh, is to rename any exe to ex underscore. Still lets you load it up in IDA without issue. Still lets you analyze it without issue. It just keeps you from accidentally double clicking on it. Where's that malware? There we go. Labs. MSP. We'll copy that here. It's going to get crowded. Okay. And we will take a look at that in item. Okay. Hey, we got a pretty graph. We got a graph. That must mean everything's okay. Okay, so text, XOR, find all. It's already there since I just did it. Sort. We go up to the guy and we see, oh, oh look at that. Let's take a look at this. We see an XOR with a bold line, good indicator, and that is 100B. Zero, zero Yep. That looks like that is where we are. XOR loop. As we're reading from memory, R0 to EX, EX, EDX, XOR increment EDX. So what's going on here? Who can tell me tell me what this loop is doing? How it's different from just a simple read from memory, XOR it right back to memory. Okay, what's this first one doing? Move. No, let's start here. What's that first one doing? Nothing. What's this next one doing? What's this move? What's what's it putting into EAX? What does that mean? First argument. Yeah, that's the first argument passed to the function. So it's taking the first argument, putting it into EAX. <coughs> then what's this doing? This is an easy one. What's 
move VL7. Sean, let's move VL7. Into. No, that's an L. Yeah. Yeah. And what's VL? Yeah, that's a little low quarter byte of BDI. That's, that's a shorthand for the lower order byte of BDI. BL is B low order byte. Um, you'll see that that shorthand here, AL for the lower order byte of EAX. Um, this is important to remember for well for encodings when you do single byte per byte encodings. You'll see references to just the lower order byte. Of registers all over the place. Really good to know. So I'm moving seven into that. Okay, what's this? What's Leia doing? So the stuff that says the location of EDX plus EAX is ECX. Close. Is it loading the stuff that's at the location of ED EDX? No, it's taking the content of EDX, adding the EAX as a Memory location that the destination it puts in the ECX. Yeah. Yeah, basically. What this is doing is because it's Leia, you can almost ignore the uh, the brackets. It's getting EDX plus EAX and storing it into ECX. Yeah. But EDX zero and EAX. Right, so if EAX is a pointer to a string or a buffer, um, although we know it's a pointer to a string because we took a look at where it was being called. Oh, oh, different, different, different program. My bad. But right beforehand, there's a there's a read file, so it looks like it's probably doing something something with the file. But this looks like some kind of offset syntax, especially since EDX is being incremented down here. So yeah, it's taking the EAX plus EDX storing in ECX, which then gets referenced down here when we move into. So then what are we where are we going? Move DL into AL. What's DL? Low order byte of EDX. Yep. Another way of saying that is DL is EDX mod 256. And moving that into AL. What's this IMOL? IMOL DL. Where does it store the result of that? It's doing a multiply. I'll give you that much. Where is it storing the result of the multiply? Really good one. Anyone online, where is it storing the result of the multiply? EAX. Yes. Stores the result of the multiply in EAX and uses the full register, EAX. So DL is 7, and it takes AL, which it got from DL, multiplies it by 7, does an XOR, and stores that in EAX. Does an XOR of the low order byte of EAX with the byte pointed to by ECX, which we got from here. So what this is doing, instead of doing a straight on just XOR, it's doing a uh, a, a incrementing XOR 
by seven. Because the first time through, EDX will be zero. Will it be zero? Yes, EDX will be zero. So that'll be zero. So that'll be zero. So the result will be zero. Multiplied by zero. Next time through, EDX is one. So that's one. So that's one. So when you multiply one by seven, you now have seven. Next time through, it'll be two. So that'll be two times seven, or 14. Next time through, that'll be three. So, be, so it, it increments the first byte with zero, the next byte with seven, the next byte with 14, the next byte with 21, heck, or all, you know, common byte <coughs> representation. Um, this is one of those things that you'll see. This is real number we're dealing with, by the way. Uh, so anything that doesn't say lab, such and such, this is real number. So this is stuff that you will see in the wild. And being able to go through and say, oh, this is what's going on, and you know, pseudo code it out and go, there's a loop, there's our, our starting, you know, i equals zero, i plus plus, here's our condition here to stay in the loop, and this is what's going on. That will help determine um, <coughs> how you can decode that um, buffer or that string that's being passed to this without having to run it and infecting your API. Any questions on that? This XOR loop. And something I did to maybe help visualize here is I pseudo coded it. We have our 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 increment. An indexing variable seems to be EDX to set to zero beforehand. So what I did was I just said, okay, that's I. So it's set to zero. We know it gets incremented each time through the loop, I plus plus, and we keep going while it is, as compared down here, less than R4. And then I took a look in here and I said, okay, the masking value here is going to end up being equal to our index because we have the, the DL there. Mod 256 times 7, the I mol here. And then we're going to take the low uh, the low order byte of that. We're going to XOR it with the byte at our input string at offset the index value. So that's how I would go about pseudocoding that. And based on this you could maybe you know, this is being used to close the Thanks, Drew. Um, if this is being used, say, for obfuscating a file, or deobfuscating a file, you could code this up in Python, Perl, Scheme, whatever, whatever you're most comfortable with, and and run that and deobfuscate the file and then see what, what the contents are. Yay, pseudocode. Okay. So, where were we? We talked about that XOR and variations. So that's that's one very that's that is real malware right there. That is something that real, real malware has done. That um, variation on on an XOR, where it's uh, uh, incrementally. Um, Incremental XOR. I've seen a simple, you know, one value incrementing XOR where the first one XOR was zero, an XOR was one, an XOR was two. This one just happened to go by seven. Um, but this is real malware that you're seeing. This is what real malware does. Okay. <coughs> 